event because it's for the support that I got when I was a student athlete. Uh, and, and secondly, because of the fact that we both share a common thread is that we love Southern Illinois University. And that has not changed with me. And, 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 and that needs to be said. You know, I, I still believe in our system uh, because of how hard we worked and how focused we were uh, during the, the conference tournament. The way we play is the way I want to play. The way I coach is the way I want to coach. Um, and I saw, and I think we saw our guys at a different level of commitment during that time. Now, why it took so long, I have no idea. But understanding where they need to go and where they need to be uh, is something that I clearly um, had them with an understanding at this point. You know, I'm really looking forward to turning it back around. Because number one, I want to make uh, the people that are close to me proud of me. And that is obviously my family, um, my coaching staff, and the, number one, the fans and alumni. I think it's important uh, for me to say that, that this is not uh, a gloom and doom time anymore. I, I think that uh, moving forward, we understand what needs to be done. And obviously, me and Mario being together on this and not, 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 not showing separation. I mean, it's not a front. It's reality. It's the understanding of two men knowing that in order to get better at something, we got to talk, and it has to be a business talk. It can't be a friendship talk. Um, it, it has to be straight business, and uh, sometimes business talks aren't always fun. And understanding people have families and all, um, that's a part of this business. Um, so, like you said with the personnel stuff, we, we're not going to handle what's going to happen to our staff like they're business associates, but that's family, and that's how you know, we're going to handle moving to handle that uh, when, when we do announce what's going to, what's going to take place. Um, you know, we have some key upperclassmen that we're excited about that are here, and some younger guys that we must continue to develop, and I think that's, that's the key. Player development has to go back to being the number one thing, and that's where we really succeeded in the past. We developed guys, guys got better, you know, and, and, and there's also culture issues that um, that have changed some of that too. But like I said, we have to find the right profile kids. Uh, we have to find find the right profile parents, <coughs> and that that's even more important uh, because we we went from a traveling team with all the parents going on most of the road trips to not having very many parents traveling at all, and that that's really important uh, to me and and to the kids that are playing. I think that we have to um, continue to develop our players to get them back to the, the players that our fans are accustomed to seeing. Um, and those are hard-nosed, unselfish, and always competitive. And I think we saw that competitiveness in St. Louis, uh, and the unselfishness in St. Louis resulted in our you know, season lows of turnovers, a lot of different guys getting touches, making plays, guys diving on the floor again, uh, guys trying to take charge again. I think those things have to come back. You know, I, I just want to close by saying, um, you know, our future in in, in, the, in this program is to, to recruit kids and maintain a stable structure for them, um, to be able to grow and prosper where they can where they can have excellence on the court and in the classroom. And you know, once that is continues to be the focus for me and, and my staff then I think we'll see results that, 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 that both sides want to see. All right, uh, we're going to take some questions. And just a reminder that if you've got a question for a specific person, just address them. And then if you want both to answer, uh, indicate that as well. But then uh, we'll open it up for questions at this time. Um, Mario, I'm Dana Jacobson. Um, in the success of the program begins and ends with the coach, how is getting rid of it? Well, I think, you know, you look at the program in total, um, and I think that, you know, I've been pretty clear with my statements, and certainly in the past, um, it would be, I don't want to use the word foolish, but I think it would be uh, not, not, not very, uh, not looking in the future. Um, if you take into consideration what Chris Lowry has done as a head coach. You know, when, when we, when Chris was hired here many years ago and when he was given a contract extension, there's a reason why 
Paul Kowalczyk thought he was the right guy. And there's a reason why the institution, as well as the athletic director, thought he was the right guy to lead a program. And that's kind of in good times and bad. I think in a perfect world, we just keep winning. And that goes on until, you know, we get to the Final Four and win the national championship. But sometimes there's bumps in the road. And sometimes there's, those bumps are over an extended period of time. But when you are involved with a coach, I would use almost the example of involved in a marriage. It's easy to really get divorced when things aren't going well. But it's the, can you see past that and see, hey, this is the person that I got married to. And maybe we're off track just a little bit now. But I'm, I was confident of why I got married to that person. So we're going to ride this rough patch through because I know we can make it together. So I, I hope that, uh, you know, just saying, let's, you know, change coaches, that would be, in my opinion, certainly the easy way out. Uh, but I do not feel that that would be the best thing for the program at this time. I think that from a fund from season ticket holders who have been watching the you all for getting late for the, well, I might not well, you know, there's there is a certain amount that no matter what, when you're winning, the fans will come, and when you're not, they're they're going to come less. We realize that. I think that you know myself, the coaching staff. <laughs> You know, our athletic staff, what we need to do is get the word out that, you know, we want you to come to Saluki basketball. You know, we might be in a rough patch right now, but the reality is we've got a lot of solid, long-time supporters of, of SIU basketball. And certainly there's some casual fans who are going to make the decision to come or not to come, but I'm pretty confident that we've got a big core of support. And it's up to all of us to get out in the community, the Rotary Clubs, the Lions Club, the Elks, et cetera, et cetera, and talk to people and keep inviting them back to, you know, the arena. I mean, we did a $30 million renovation with video boards and things like that and try to do reunions and, and a million other things to attract fans, not only for the basketball, but a lot of value-added stuff. And we hope that they will see that. And plus, you know, I guess also our sincere efforts on trying to turn it around. You know, there's a lot of places that have fickle fans. Um, I don't see this as one of them. We do realize that we have to win to attract the fans and get back to sellouts, but I'm very confident that we've got a, a group of hardcore Saluki fans that can see past, you know, this this momentary uh, struggles that we're, we're uh, going through right now, and I think they're going to come back. Are you concerned about contributions to the program? Well, you know, that goes hand in hand. I think a lot of people you know, when we, uh, when we did our, um, our Saluki Way uh, campaign, uh, those were payable over a five-year period of time, most of those commitments. So people are, in effect, I, I think our core fans in it for the long haul. But at the same time, yeah, I have concerns about a great many issues, how many tickets we're going to sell in football, contributions for basketball, you name it. But it is our staff's job, as well as our coaches' jobs, to get out to the public, ask people to keep supporting us, make a compelling case, and... Um, you know, that's kind of the blueprint for asking people to stay involved. Chris, I know that in this top Richards with KFES, um, you mentioned retention as being important, um, and you mentioned you like a lot of the guys that you have coming back. Do you see um, more turnover going into next season with some of the guys? Well, I, you know, I think the number one thing is that we haven't met with all of our players. Now, we, uh, you know, we, we expect everybody to be back. Obviously, that we've got the conference tournament that's going to return. So, you know, we, we have a player and coach meetings after the season, and you know at this point we're not we're not expecting anything crazy. Chris, I'm second. Somebody, um, talk about um, getting fans uh, to step back into the game. Uh, is there any way, in particular, at least for um, the offseason, that's going into preseason um, for next year? Is there anything that you're going to do that you get the student body interested in the game? Like we saw with Bruce Weber actually going to the board. Like well, I think the number one thing is that um, we stopped doing that because we brought them to the arena. We brought oh. pieces. We, we, we've actually have oh. done that still, but we haven't publicly said we do stuff like that. I think that's the number one thing with me is that we just we, we, we got to continue to get to them um, and get the students to come back. And that, but it, it's just like anything else. You have to you have to get them something to want to be here. And you know I've. You know, I've always been a part of, you know, um, 
the student side of it because I understand the component. Um, we've done pizza parties in the arena after practice and had them be the, had them come to practice last five minutes. Um, but I, I think that uh, the dog pound has been a big, the biggest thing that I've been associated with, as opposed to the student, because the, you know, the incentive of being a dog pound to be able to sit there, we have to find out what 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 the students want. I think more and look at it at that point, and, and then go from there. How has uh, Chris, how has uh, this whole situation affected you and your family at all? Well, I I think the number one thing is that. Um, you know, all the all the recruits that signed are coming here. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, we've had media people call them and ask them questions that they shouldn't. And that's why there's no story about it, because they all said they were coming. And, you know, that's, that's not really fair to them, and it's not fair to their parents. They're coming here, obviously, because of me. But number one is because of this place, you know. And, and that, and that is, is the number one reason. And the question that... In a time where it's not known, it's wrong. And, but these guys are coming, and that's the good part about recruiting and signing. They're coming, they're excited. Um, you know, they think 2012. Well, yeah, I mean, we have a commitment still in 12. Yeah. So, I mean, those, and, and like I said, these are all kids that knew us when they were little kids and, and, and saw how kids play for me and want to be a part of that, that experience. Not the experience that we've suffered through the last couple of years. But the experience of seeing us and seeing how hard we play, and and, and hearing things as a kid, when you're a comment, hear a commentator say, "These guys always play hard." These, this is if you want to know what it means to play hard, watch this program, and and those are the reasons why we've gotten the kids we have right now. Mario, when will you announce which assistant coaches are going to let go? Um, you know, I I, I can't you know determine at, at the present time when uh, you know all the contractual stuff will be completed, so we'll move as fast as we can. Uh, obviously, you know, we, we need to and want to, uh, you know, uh, get new assistant coaches in, certainly the right assistant coaches, so we're not going to you know, necessarily rush out and do something. But at the same time, you know, these things take a little time, so, you know, don't know the answer to that, but bear with us. Well done. Um, Chris, I'm Jared Russo with WIDP. Uh, you talked about how you expect all the players that were with you on the St. Louis trip to come back. What does that mean with uh, Gene P? It's still the same as, as far as player meetings are concerned. Um, with, with him, he had, he had different different issues than the rest of the team. And <coughs> dealing with, you know, from the suspension stuff. And, um, you know, I want to still have my meeting with him. He's still a part of the program. And, you know, it'll be addressed after we could. Resolved, you know, court cases, whatever, the players themselves, that have any effect on your outlook or what they're going to do? No, I, that, that, that process was handled by the other two players, is what I'm saying, and the right way. So that's what that was with him. Chris, you talked about uh, <coughs> Mario, and you heard things you didn't, you know, that you needed to hear. Uh, take us through some of that and maybe where you, when you evaluate where things are now as opposed to following the Sweet 16 season, you know, what has to change? Well, I mean, that's, that's obviously stuff that, you know, that I, we obviously don't want to probably share any of that, what that was said, but the thing about it is change came about from it, and that's the most important thing. It, like I said, it can't be the status quo. It has to be changed. Um, I, we both talked about some of the things we talked about in the meeting. Uh, but as far as specifics, um, it was a very good meeting. When you look at the, the issues, what, what's the, as far as the, for you, maybe the thing that, that has to change specifically that, that I need to do better for this to go forward? Well, I think that I got to be the head recruiter again. I got to be out. You know, that was my deal. I've worked like an assistant. That's, you know, that's why, that's the reason. You know that I've had success because I've been gone all the time. I've worked as if I wasn't the head coach, and I think that's the number one thing that I about myself that I have to do more and get back to doing things. And then also, what changes do you need out of your staff? If you're making changes in your staff, what, what do you need out of them to? Well, I think you know. I don't think it's fair to discuss the specifics of that side of it. It really is my program, so. 
the, if I, the, the head's got to get right before the body does. So, you know, I think that, you know, that's, that'll be addressed once I can